Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today, Skylum Software released GenSwap. GenSwap is part of Luminar Neo and it's part of the actual application. It is not an extension. GenSwap is equivalent to Photoshop's generative fill. With either tool, you're able to add things to a photo. And that's what we're going to be doing today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use GenSwap and with it, we're gonna add things to a few different images. Now, a couple things before we begin I want to mention. Uh, first of all, like Generative Fill, GenSwap does do all its work in the cloud, so you do need an active internet connection. Also, you'll notice that GenSwap is found in the right-hand panel of Luminar Neo's catalog module. Because it's in the catalog module, if you use Luminar Neo as a plugin, you will not be able to use GenSwap. You'll have to use it as a standalone app. Now, to use it, I have this image here. Let's just say that I want to add a swan to the water. Go to the catalog module Luminar Neo and click on Gen Swap. And when you do, it will open up the image in the Gen Swap dialog. And it does this kind of preliminary examination of the image. Uh, it only takes five to 10 seconds. I think what it's doing is just kind of finding where the water is, the sky is, the trees are, and stuff like that. Once it's done, though, uh, you'll be presented with a brush. And with the brush, you'll just paint on the image where you want your object added. By default, you'll have a select brush. You can see down here we have this little toolbar. I have a select brush, and with the select brush, you can just paint where you want whatever it is you want added. Let's say I want a little swan put right there. Now, if you do make a mistake, let's say you paint it over here, you do have a deselect brush. Just click on the deselect brush, and you could change the size of the brush with this slider or with the bracket keys. Left bracket keys make the brush larger or smaller, I'm sorry. Right bracket key larger. Just come in and erase it. I'm going to go back to my select brush. I'm going to get maybe a, just a smaller brush by hitting my left bracket key and just say paint right here. Now, be very careful with how you paint. I found just a little bit, I messed around with it, that you need to have a really good mask to get a good gen swap. So make sure that you're very careful with your masking, your painting, as I did here. Once you're satisfied, click right here and then tell Luminar Neo exactly what you want. I want a swan. We're just going to do that, and then you're going to go over here and you're going to click on Swap. Now, it does work in the cloud. It's going to set it up to the cloud. Let's read these tips at the bottom. Make sure you've masked all parts of the selected area. For example, if you're masking an object, make sure to catch its shadow, reflection, and all its parts. Again, it's very important that you're careful with your masking uh, because that really will help you get the best possible swap. Feel free to mask a slightly larger area than you need. If you miss a part of an object, the results of gen swap might not be what you're looking for. So again, masking and painting, make sure you're careful with it. Try to write an extended prop by describing what you want to get in detail. Now I just want a swan, but if you want a specific swan with a specific colored beak and you know different color tips on its feathers, write all that in there. Be as descriptive as needed. Now it added a swan and it added a reflection too, and it actually did a pretty good job. If you're satisfied with it, go up and click save. If you're not satisfied with it, unlike generative fill, it doesn't give you any other examples. You know, generative fill gives you three examples. Here, if you're not happy with it, you have to either just click on swap again, it will set it up to the cloud again and get you another version of the image, or go over here and change your description or what you want, and then click on swap, swap again. Now, in this case, I like it, so we'll just click save. And we click save, it is non-destructive. It's not touching the original image. What it does is it creates a new image and it puts that image in a folder that it creates called generative creations. And if I open that up, notice there's a couple other images here. Those of you that are familiar with my channel know that a week or two ago, I did a video on generase. And when I use generase, it too is non-destructive and it puts the resultant image in this folder as well. So those are those two images I used in that other video. This is the image I just did now. If you want to go back to your original image, just go to your original folder or album. There it is. There's our original image. It's untouched. So it's non-destructive. Let's try another one. Let's go to this one, this picture I took of the Brooklyn Bridge. I want to add an eagle <laughs> up here in the sky. So again, we're in the catalog module of Luminar Neo. We'll just click on Gen Swap. Again, it does this like examination thing. It was pretty quick here. There's not a lot of different elements in this image compared to the last image. We, by default, will have the select brush. I want an eagle. I want it above the flag. I want it off in the distance. And I want it right here. Okay, so that's where I want it. 
So I'm going to click here and I'm going to be a little more um, descriptive here. Uh, American, bald, eagle, flying left to right. Now I'm not sure if it will know it's left from its right, but let's see. So I wrote that and I'll click swap. Now again, it sends it up to the cloud and it does its thing up there. And it may, you know, depending on your speed of your internet, it may take a while. Also how busy their server is. And I think their server is probably pretty busy today since this was just released today. So I suspect it's taken a little extra long uh, today compared to other days. Again, you get these tips at the bottom uh, you could look at. Unfortunately, it won't let me page through them, so I can't go through them quickly. Now, I did uh, try this uh, image. Um, oh, I do want to read this tip to you very quick. Use nouns in the prompt describing exactly what you want to see. For example, blue sea, big tiger, and avoid using verbs like change, erase, remove, add, or create. Notice I didn't write add an eagle, add a swan. I didn't write create an eagle, create a swan. Okay. Um, I mentioned that I did do this uh, before I did the video and I wasn't happy with any of the results and I'm not happy with the results here. You can see there's something up there in the sky, but it doesn't really look like an eagle to me um, and it's going right to left. <laughs> so um, I could click swap again and we'll just try it one more time. Uh, so just very quickly that last tip. Um, so don't use verbs. Don't like add an eagle. Don't write, um, you know, create an eagle, nothing like that. Just write exactly what you want as succinctly as possible, but as descriptive as possible. Um, I tried to write flying left to right, but apparently that didn't work. Also, I want to add that they did mention that as of right now, uh, this works best if you type English in that thing. They are going to extend it and expand it to other languages. And it does work somewhat with other languages right now. But from what I understand, from what they're claiming is right now, if you want the best results possible, type English. Uh, so hopefully that gets updated very soon. So those of you that don't speak English or English isn't your first language, you're, um, you'll have be able to write something here that is descriptive. Now, I don't like this one either. So I just don't like it. I'm going to just click cancel. We're going to try something else. Now, um, as I mentioned, I tried this uh, with this image uh, before I did the video, and I didn't like any of the results either. Uh, with the swan, I tried that before I did the video, and it worked pretty well every single time. So it's kind of hit and miss. Now, those of you that watch my videos may know that a couple weeks ago, I did a video trying to use Photoshop's generative fill to add clouds to a sky, and Photoshop's generative fill failed spectacularly. It wasn't able to add clouds to a sky. It's just not realistically. It just didn't work well at all. Let's see how Gen Swap does. So I have this image here. Obviously, there's no clouds at all in the sky. So we're going to go to Gen Swap. Does its little examination. I'm going to get a really big brush. Now, again, I tried this before I started the video. And it does mention that you should kind of overlap areas uh, when you're painting. And I found that what I did when I did it one time, I overlapped the trees down here. And it worked fine. But I did overlap that kind of fake lighthouse. And uh, it actually changed the lighthouse considerably. So it didn't look anything like it really looks like. So I am not going to touch the lighthouse. I'm just going to come close to it as close as you know possible with the brush without touching it. Uh, just, I don't know why it doesn't really mess with the trees compared in the grass and stuff like that compared to the man-made structure, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. And I'm sure it will probably improve with time. So in this case, I'm just going to get as close to that lighthouse as possible. And like, you know, like that, I don't know. I could take my time, get a smaller brush and kind of get in as close as possible. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. So we're going to go to our prompt and I'm going to type in uh, fluffy white clouds. All right. And then we're going to click swap. Now again, it sends it up to the cloud. So, you know, it's going to take a minute or three. Um, one thing I do want to mention is, again, those of you that follow my channel know that uh, a month or two ago, I released a big training video series on Lightroom Classic, like over 60 videos hours and hours of training, huge success. Thank you to everyone that purchased it. Um, I am going to be doing one on Luminar Neo. I put uh, 
kind of a pull out uh, earlier, and Luminar Neo was the most popular um, answer for pe from people when I asked them what training video series would they like to see next, and Luminar Neo was um, was number one. So I'll be doing that next. I'll be working on that actually within the next day or two. So hopefully that will be released soon. Now, it did change the tree. You can see it did change the tree uh, considerably. When I did try this last time, it didn't really change the tree at all. Uh, so it is, again, kind of hit and miss. And you can see what it did. Now, I, did, I don't really like this. So I'm just going to write clouds. I mean, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder, but let's just swap it again and try some clouds and see what it does here. Um, so hopefully, you know, you'll be able to get what you want. But I'll say right out of the box, as far as the clouds are concerned, it's better than Photoshop's generative fill. I wasn't able to get generative fill to add clouds in a realistic way to any image that I tried. Um, I mean, one, I think towards the end of my video, there was one that was okay. But I mean, let's face it. With Luminar Neo, it does have a sky replacement tool that takes seconds, and you could put your own skies in there, or you could buy third-party skies. You know, I'm always droning on about AkiDrone skies, how I feel they're the best third-party skies on the market. So um, it's a lot easier than using generative fill. Is if you just use your own skies, or use generative, fill, or use AkiDrone skies, or something like that, and then uh, use the sky replacement tool in Luminar Neo to replace the sky. And you could use that as a plugin as well. So there it is. I mean, it looks okay, uh, but it's a lot better than than uh, Photoshop. So we'll just click save, and there we are. So that's uh, Gen Swap in Luminar Neo. And again, I mentioned I'll be working on this uh, video series. I did um, outline it, and so far in my outline, I think I have fifty four videos uh, for the series that I want to do. And like the, um, the Lightroom series I did, and I'm still adding to it too. Um, I'll, uh, have PDF outlines for each of the videos that you could download and all the files I use in the videos, you could download those as well and work along at home. And like the Lightroom series, it's going to be a dynamic thing. I'm always going to be adding to it. So when Lightroom released version 13, I did videos on 13 and added them to the course. This week, uh, this weekend, or early next week, I'm going to add um, some things on um, uh, watermarking and identity plates to the Lightroom course. So I'll always be adding to it is what I'm getting at, and I plan to do the same thing with the Luminar Neo uh, series as well. So that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.